Yo, Kepe Sky here with Gone YouTube. Welcome back to the channel. And today we have made some new friends from Elite Screens. They have sent me out their brand new acoustically transparent. I think this is a 106 inch screen, something like that. I'll have it down below in the description for you guys. But they sent this out to me because it's brand new from them and they want to test it out. And the way that they found me, I've actually owned, I think, two elite screens, including the one that I have right now. And they saw some of my reviews and comparisons of some of their screens and they decided to send out their acoustically transparent screen for review for you guys. So what I'm gonna do is I take my trusty uh, little box cutter here and we're gonna open this up and lay out everything that's inside. And I'm gonna try to put this thing together <laughs> in my small living room by myself. And uh, hopefully I can get it up on the wall and show you guys kind of what it's all about. I'd, last time I put my screen up, I had another pair of hands and my room was laid out differently so I had more space. So this is probably gonna be a, a challenge nonetheless. But let me get this open for you guys and we'll get right into it. All right, so we have everything laid out. There's a couple of rods everywhere. Everything's a mess. Had to push things to the back of the room to try to make as much space as I could. But we have everything laid out. And this is what I like to do first. Just put everything around the room and put all things that look similar together so I know where everything's at and then lay out all my tools that I'm gonna need. So we got gloves, screws, hooks, L brackets, all sorts of things here. So we're gonna go ahead and get into the instructions and see what is first for us to do here. We do have a little bit of advertisement and all that good stuff, but let's see what the first thing is to do after you've laid everything out. All right, so this is the Pro Series Aeon Acoustic Pro 8K. And so what's the biggest difference between what I have and what this is, is mine's not uh, acoustically transparent but mine is a gray screen, the center gray screen that I had. Um, and I really like the gray screen because it helps make blacks look a little bit darker. You sacrifice a little bit of brightness and color pop, but you make up for a lot better HDR in my personal opinion. And so this one's a white screen and it's still one of those really thin bezels. There's not really a big border or Velcro border around. I hate that. I think it just looks too thick. And so this one has a very uh, thin screen as well. So I'm happy to see that it is ambient lighting and ceiling lighting uh, rejecting. So this should be really nice and it is a fixed frame type of screen. So I'm excited to try this out. So let's see, let's start with step one. All right, so this is the camera angle I'm gonna choose for you guys, probably the easiest for you to see. We have our gloves, which they actually include another pair for somebody else who wants to help you. This is our sponge that they provide, the, e the EPE sponge they provide so you can lay down your screen on top of this, especially if you don't have a smooth surface like a carpet maybe. Um, it will keep the screen from being damaged or scratched or any oils on it, all that good stuff. So we have that laid down on the floor. The first thing we want to do is take our brackets labeled A, B, and C. There are two pairs of each and we want to lay it around our uh, screen basically where we're going to have our screen. So I believe if I do this right, it should look like this. I think one of these are longer than the other. So I want to say this goes on the top and these smaller ones go on the sides. Let's see. All right, maybe tough for you guys to see, but we have our, our main pieces kind of put around the sponge so that we know what to do from here. So we need to put our brackets in according to the, um, the instructions. So we're gonna grab our brackets and we're gonna put together all of these frames here to make them connect. They're really easy to lay out because of their angles. The pictures actually do a really good job of showing you the angles. So they're not hard to follow, um, but you wanna pretty much connect them um, on the ground like so and then further piece them together with your brackets. That's what we're gonna do. Let me grab my brackets and put these together for you. So it looks like we're taking A and B and the G screws and we're connecting the two, the middle beams together. So we take one of A and one of B and it looks like A slots in between. There we go. So this goes in here. And this goes above on top, I think. And I think we can screw them in. Okay. 
Okay, okay, okay. Now we want to do the same thing with these corners. Connecting these, after we connect to our bottom and top piece, we want to connect all of our right angles with C and D. And just like we did before, one of these will be threaded, the other one will be the larger diameter holes, and they'll go on top of each other. So you'll feed it through one corner inside the frame, the bigger diameter holes will go on top of it, and then you can screw inward. So that's what we're gonna do. So everything is connected and before continuing, I really recommend you go through and make sure that there are no gaps in any of your corners or any of your center beams. You don't want to have to go back and fix this. So check all of your corners before you proceed and make sure there's no gaps or anything like that in your right angles or in your center pieces there. If you are good to go, then you are welcome to change to the next page and see what's next. So here's when we need our white gloves. Make sure you have this on because now we're dealing with the screen. When you have your frames all connected, we wanna roll out the screen over top of the frame here and you wanna put the back side facing up. And it may not come through on the camera, but it's pretty obvious to tell what side is the back and what side is the front. Um, so there are some markings that you know, but we wanna roll this sucker out so that we can put it on the screen. So let me do that. And of course we have a lot of roll here. There we go. That's better. Man, doing this in a small living room is the best. This is awesome. <laughs> we have so much extra screen part here just to keep everything safe, but the black part is the screen itself. That's the part that we want rolled out over top of the frame. Somehow I'm gonna have to get to the other side. This is where things become fun, is tiptoeing around the room. Here we go. So we got the screen rolled out. I'll have to make some more space here, move the couch back. But the screen is rolled out. So this is where we start connecting our rods and getting ready to assemble the screen onto the frame. So let me do that real quick. All right, when you have your screen laid over top of the frame, you wanna grab your rods. You're gonna have two reds and four blacks. The reds will go on the sides and the blacks will go over the top and the bottom. And these are the rods that you're gonna to use to hook your screen to so that it's nice and tight and stays in place. So we wanna actually slide these rods inside the screen itself. The sides of the screen around the perimeter, um, it's like a sleeve. So you slide these inwards and then there's some holes as you guys can see that will, maybe you guys can see that. I don't know if you can see. There are some holes in the screen itself so that you can hook your rods or your hooks into. So the rods slide inside the sleeve and then the hooks go through the holes so that they stay in place. So we're gonna slide our, our rods inside and we can go on to the next step. All right, so all the rods are in place and you just kind of weave them in and out of the holes. You go in one and out another, in and out another, and you do that all the way around. Once you're done with that, you can actually get the frame 
and put it on top of the screen. I kept my screen on top of my frame only because I don't have any space in here, but typically move the frame out of the way and then you put your screen on the surface flat on the sponge. Once you've got all the rods in, then you take your frame and you place it on top of the back side or the black side of the screen. So we're gonna get the frame and put it on top and we'll get rolling. All right, once you have your frame in place, there's some markings on each of the corners to kind of align your frame with. Once you have your frame set up on the top of the back side of the screen, you wanna take your uh, center rod. This is gonna give tension in the middle here so that the frame doesn't flex or anything like that. It keeps the screen stable. So on the side, it says this side faces down. You wanna put this inside of the frame and you're slowly going to work this in the middle. Of course, as you get more towards the middle, it becomes a lot tighter. So I actually have a rubber mallet. I'm gonna use, it's actually 12 at night here right now, so I don't wanna make too much noise. So I'm gonna grab my rubber mallet and I'm gonna slightly uh, hammer this until it is centered and tight in the middle. And you wanna align it right where these brackets are. There's a little line where your two brackets meet, your two frames meet. You wanna kinda of put it in the middle. Um, so that's what we're gonna do here. So it's time for everyone's favorite part, and that's putting all the hooks onto the screen. Now pay attention to the manual because these hooks aren't the same length on both ends. One end of the, of the spring is longer than the other. You want the shorter end to be on the frame and then pull um, that hook to the screen and fold it over. You wanna start at each center point of the frame. So top center, bottom center, um, and then left center, right center. You wanna start on the center of each so that you have the correct tension. And then pay attention to the manual again because they want you to set them up at certain points so that you have the most tension on the screen so it's tight so you don't have any wrinkles when you're watching any of your content so make sure that you pay attention to which hooks go first because they are in order from what one through like 15 or six however many springs they are they're numeric the numerical order so you want to put them correctly i'm gonna go ahead and do that off camera we have all of the springs in and there's one last thing for us to do before we should be complete these were also in the box these are your little edge trims that go around the screen to give it kind of this borderless seamless kind of look but also keep the screen tight you want to make sure that you identify the one that has the logo on it i'm not sure if you guys can see that it says elite screens this needs to be on the top um, because that's what's going to be um, kind of like your reference point on how these are ordered and whenever the screen is complete and you have it hung up on your wall that Elite Screens logo should be facing towards you um, so that people who come into your home know what kind of screen you have. So this is gonna be one of the two top pieces and then there's two left side pieces, kind of similar to how we did the frame. We're gonna do the same thing with this, put it around the parameter and then use our L brackets to put them together. So I'm gonna do that off camera, of course, and we should be finished. All right, we have assembled the trim it was actually really easy to do. Same thing that we did in the very beginning with the frame, how, how we put that on. We're going to do the same thing with the smaller trim around the screen. Um, it actually makes perfect sense once you get started. Um, so that was easy to put on. The last thing we need to do, there's some little caps here that you put on the corners here. So you can hide some of the ugliness, some of the screws here. There are some adhesive uh, kind of tape inside. You want to take off the yellow tape. I kind of shown it here. There's some sticky side in here a little bit, so you wanna take off the yellow tape to expose the sticky side, and then you can stick it right into the corners of the screen to kind of make it look a little bit nicer. So it'll look a lot like that, if you guys can see. So pretty cool. All right, moment of truth. We're gonna flip this over and stand it up and take a look at it. I haven't seen it yet. I just finished putting all the springs on and all that good stuff. Let's flip it over and take a look and see how bad of a job that I did. <laughs> All right, guys, there we go. Man, that actually looks really good. I like that minimalistic frame. That's what I really like. When you spend a good amount of money on screens, they actually seem to be a lot easier to put together and they look a lot nicer. Instead of having those really thick bezels, this really thins a little lining around it, looks really nice. And then, like I said, easier to assemble because they put more you know, products in there to make it easier to assemble, to make it look nicer, all that good stuff. So this was a super easy uh, installation. This is probably the easiest screen that I've ever installed. Even the one above it was easy too. That's also an elite screen. The gray one, that's also an elite screen, uh, project screen too. That was easy to build as well. 
this one here, their new one was easier. Now there are some brackets to mount it on the wall that I'm actually not going to be using at all. As you guys can see, if you're familiar with my KP Sky channel, I actually have mine hung up on the ceiling with some ceiling hooks because they take a lot of weight. And so that's the easy way for me to do it because I live in an apartment. I do have some brackets on the wall already that I could probably use on this screen, maybe, probably not. I won't even try it. But I won't be hanging it on the wall. I'll be hanging it from the ceiling like I have before. So it's late here right now. I think it's close to one o'clock in the morning. So what I'm gonna do, guys, I'm gonna end the video here, but thank you so much for Elite Screens for sending this out to me. I cannot wait to hang it up and take a look at it. I believe this is 106 inches or so, something around there. I'll have it down below in the description. Right now, they only make them in 16 by nine, so your regular TV aspect ratio, which is fine because most content's in 16 by nine, but I believe maybe in the future they'll try to release something um, for the wide cinematic type of view for people who like that. So I am super excited to hang this up. Once I get it up, I will do some full reviews on how it looks, how well it does with the light rejecting. Um, yeah, as you guys can kind of see, this screen here is not light rejecting. I have two studio lights on the side of it there. And so you can see that it reflects a lot more on the gray than it does here on the screen. So that's going to be pretty cool. I'll test that out for you guys. We'll do some tests, watch some movies together, and we'll give a full review. But again, thank you so much to Elite Screens for sending this out to me. Hopefully we can do more business later on in the future, guys. Leave me a comment down below and let me know if you're using a projector screen, what projector screen are you using? Are you using Elite Screens? Are you using something from Amazon, something from a uh, home theater in a box? What are you using for your home theater screen? Leave me that comment down below. Hit that like button and subscribe if you are not already. We will see you guys in the next video. K-Pace Guy out. Peace.